Okay, today we're looking at how computers store sound. So a quick little activity, some uh, anagrams. So I'll pause on here, pause the slide if you wish, and see if you can work out what three words we have jumbled up. So within the specification, we need to uh, cover these points. We need to understand how sound is sampled and stored in a digital format, the effect of sample rate, duration, and bit depth on both the playbook playback quality as well as the uh, size of the file. I'll pause there on this slide so you can have a read through of these requirements. Okay, so the first thing to mention, uh, you might have learned in science about how sound waves uh, work and how they're an analog uh, signal. And as we know, computers run entirely in a digital format. So everything being ones and zeros. Uh, and this is where obviously we can't directly convert something that's analog into a digital format. So at the bottom right, you can see an example of an analog sound wave and then a digital representation of it. And you can notice that it's quite blocky. And that's again, because we're using binary data. So ones and zeros to represent that curve. And therefore um, a bit like in sound where obviously we use um, those pixels, we'll use blocks to measure up the sort of digital curvature um, of a sound wave. Now, what sampling is? Sampling is where we take a measurement of the individual uh, height of the sound wave. So what we've got is it's probably easier to look at this image where this input is our analog sort of sound wave. Now this would be uh, a smooth curve, but just because it's represented on the computer, you can see that it's slightly pixelated, but imagine that this is a smooth curve and this represents our analog sound. Our sample rate underneath, you can see different uh, frequencies within our sample rate. So on the furthest left, you can see the smallest amount of samples being taken. On the right-hand side, you can see the highest amount of samples being taken. Now, the key thing here is the sample rate is at set regular intervals. So you won't have an audio file that will actually change over the course, course of duration. This is just example, an example of it. So it would be set at the start of the recording or the start of the audio file as to how many times that sound wave is measured. Now, an example of this is typically 44.1 kilohertz. So this is what audio is quite often measured in. So 44,100 measurements of that sound wave are taken per second. And that will be 44,100 measurements every single second for as long as the duration of that audio. And that can be lower, it can be higher, but generally speaking, that's the audio sort of frequency. Now, the output of those measurements is shown below. So you can see that in a scenario where we have the fewer amount of samples being taken, the less accurate our representation of our analog sound wave is. So you can see that the fewer, just to re-highlight again, the fewer measurements being taken, the less accurate it is. As we move to the right-hand side, where you can see an example of lots of measurements being taken, you can see it's a much closer representation to the actual sound wave. Now that closer representation means that when we're listening to that file, the sound is gonna sound much more like the original. So if you were to listen to this left-hand side of this um, audio sort of track, it would sound very, very different to the original analog sound. When we've got lots of samples being taken, so those measurements are happening constantly uh, at a very high rate, you'll see that you can start to replicate that analog curve in a lot uh, closer, and therefore it will sound a lot more like the original. Now you might perceive this to be that it will sound clearer. That won't give you the mark in an exam. You need to be that it's saying that it's closer to the original sound wave. So it's more accurate to the original sound wave rather than it's clearer, okay? Bit depth then. So bit depth is the point, um, just like it's in images where we're talking about how many bits we're using per measurement. So in that respect, when we look at the analog sound wave, so we've got our input sound wave, same curve, and then our output, the amount of bits that we use gives us the different heights that we can measure and the different variations within those heights. So if it were a simple one bit, you would either have on or off. So your graph would almost just be absolute like squares where you've got a one being up, zero being down, and it would be a really basic measurement. You can see as your bits start to increase again, you get, get a greater depth of uh, sounds that you can record and therefore the, the wider range of noises that you can make. And again, it helps with the accuracy of uh, matching that original sound wave. So audio file sizes, we, we looked at file sizes previously, but just to recap, you've got um, simple calculations. So the file size will be made up of the duration of the audio. So whether it be one minute, one second, um, and, you, and you're calculating this by seconds. So you calculate it per second. 
So the duration in seconds times by the sample rate, so the amount of samples were taken. If you remember, we said 44,100 per second. Uh, bit depth, how many bits we're storing per each of those samples. And the only thing that we've introduced here is channels. Now, you may not get asked about channels in the exam, but it's worthwhile knowing. Now, channels are about that idea of um, when you're listening to music and sometimes music will come out of your left headphone and not the right, or it might be the right, not the left. That's dual channel. That's referred to as stereo. So stereo is that idea of you've got two channels, so the left and right channel. And if you've heard of, for example, 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound, that again is saying how many channels there are. So five channels and a one central channel. So there'd be six channels in total. So if you're given the information about channels, you need to just multiply that out as well. So in it's exactly the same with all the other file sizes. We just multiply everything out. So duration times sample times bit depth times channels. That will tell you how many bits your file is taking up. Remember, divide by eight to work out how many bytes by 1,000 or 1,024 for kilobytes and so forth.